Welcome to another episode of the Men in Conversation series, a podcast series in collaboration with the Khaleesi Foundation and Justice Desk Africa. So picture it, it's, it's 2003, you know, Kales River, Cape Flats, we are there and my cousins and I, my friends and I are watching the original Lion King, mm-hmm. right? Not this new one, the original. Yeah. And the sort of harrowing Mufasa dying scene comes and I just remember seeing the, the wildebeest running, running um, and Simba like, you know, going in between the rocks and things and his father grabbing him and putting him on the, on the side of the rock and then him being safe. But then Mufasa just, you know, yeah. slowly but surely being, you know, weakened by these wildebeest. And all of a sudden in my small 10 year old brain, I suddenly burst out crying, yeah. right? And just because it was so overwhelming, you know, especially that last bit when he's like, brother, help me. And, and Scar's just like, yeah. you know, long live the king. And then I started bawling, right? Mm-hmm. And immediately I looked around and I saw my, my friends and cousins, they were giggling, they were laughing at me, right? And immediately I felt this immense level of shame, mm-hmm. just this like, what, what have I done? I knew I did something wrong, mm-hmm. but I didn't know what it was. And I realized, okay, it must be something to do with crying. And this seems like a little bit of like a little funny tidbit story, but for me, sure. that, that is still one of my core memories and shaped, I think, my sort of first encounter with, with masculinity and some of the toxic traits of, of what it means to be a man. Welcome to the Men in Conversation podcast. I am your host, Edward Keenan Jacobs. Today, I'm joined by the phenomenal Marcus Palmer, um, who is a presenter, an actor, well known for his, his role as Tim Duploy in the Cakenet TV series, Sate, Sate Worcester. Worcester. Hey. <laughs> um, so welcome. We, today, we're going to have a conversation about manhood, masculinity, the man box, and really passing through some of these complexities and, and really hopefully journeying with all of you on how all of us can start to model positive ideas of masculinity and rid ourselves of the constraints of the man box. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Oh. I'm excited to be here. I think a, a great place to start off is to just figure out like, what do, we, what do we mean when we say the man box or when we say mm-hmm. masculinity? Oh, these words are so big, mm-hmm. so complex. So from your point of view, like what, how do you conceive of this, this idea of the man box? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I loved when you brought that to the table, the idea or the concept of the man box, because Mm. I do feel um, it's probably been about five or 10 years um, of deconstructing masculinity and toxic masculinity. I feel like it probably, like within the last five or 10 years, that's when the conversation really started happening Mm. and we started unpacking and unfolding and deconstructing and whatever. And when you brought the idea of the man box to the table, mm. I was like, yes, like I love that. Like yeah. even that is, feels like a fresh term to, to work mm. with um, and to deal with. And it also, it might potentially help people not cower away from the mm. conversation. Yes. Because I feel like maybe today, five, 10 years on masculinity, toxic yeah. masculinity, those are quite triggering for men <laughs> yeah. right now. They're yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. No, tapping exactly. out, not listening to this, yeah. not watching this. Yeah. So the idea of the man box, so lovely, so mm. fresh. Um, so thank you for bringing that to the table. And I do think um, for me, it really is just, um, it's preconceived ideas, mm. preconceived um, notions of what it means to be a man, mm. potentially, mm. you know? Mm. Like you say, this metaphor of a man box mm. is so, so palpable because mm. I think all of us who have been socialized and raised as men, we understand that we are sometimes just confined within these narrow things, mm-hmm. like, you know? And I always, I talk of this concept with our, the boys that we work with at the Justice Desk, yep. right? <laughs> um, we talk about this thing, the man card, right? Mm-hmm. And how your man card can be revoked mm-hmm. if you transverse any of those tenets of the man box. Being strong and powerful and violent and, mm-hmm. and just sports. being- Sports. Sports, exactly, yeah. stoicism, so not yeah. expressing your emotion mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. I think as we say this, I'm sure many of our listeners and people watching will relate and be like, yeah, as a man, I feel like those are some of the things that I, that I feel like, you know, box me in, you mm. know? And it's nothing about those traits, you know, mm. necessarily that are inherently bad, but I think it's about the lack of choice yeah. that, that men often it feel It limits us. Exactly. It limits yeah. us and it limits, I think, young people to 
um, to express themselves. Mm. And I think um, for me, it, it wants to, because this is, this is what I come from, or this is where I come from, is the idea of creativity. Mm. That for me, my masculinity is creative mm. um, or can be creative. Mm. And so that man box does limit young people yeah. to get creative. You know, yes. and express themselves yes. in whichever way they want to. Yeah. Um, and so, if we're trying to tick certain boxes within mm. the man box or whatever, then it really prohibits and it limits you finding ways yes. into yourself, exactly. into others, within conversations, outside of other conversations, or whatever. Mm. And so, yeah. Yeah, and it's so so hectic. That's so true because it literally limits our aspirations. Because mm. even with the young boys that we work with in the Insikaya Temba project. Even career choices, mm. it's so, so intimately intertwined with our masculinity, yeah. right? Even something like we did once, we, we baked some cookies. Mm. And the boys were like, what do you mean we're baking cookies, yeah. right? They were so like, uh, yeah. you know, not, not a vibe yeah. at the start, but afterwards they were like, I want to become a baker, I yeah. want to cook, we exactly. should learn to make soup and curry yes. and all of yes. these things. And it just shows mm. that the minute you like create a safe space and you're like, it's yeah. okay, it's okay to step out, to be a bit different, to, to explore different parts mm. of yourself. It's safe. We won't jab you. We won't make fun of you. And if you provide that safe space for young boys especially, you can see, as you say, that finding different parts of yourself that come through. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, important, yeah. what is incredibly important is, I think, the triggering word of or concept of toxic masculinity, mm. right? So right now, like I said, five, ten years on yeah. after having the opportunity to, to start deconstructing yes. these terms and these concepts. Toxic masculinity being quite triggering for men today because what does that mean? Mm. So I can't watch sports, so I can't yeah. watch rugby, yeah. I can't yeah. go out for yeah. drinks with my boys. Yeah. What does that mean? Mm. What does toxic mm. masculinity mm. mean? Mm. And I think for me, the, the concept of toxic masculinity really boils down to um, does your expression of masculinity oppress or hurt mm. or cause further suffering. Mm. Oh, and I think that's beautiful. probably, but yeah, having yeah. drinks with your boys, if it's not hurting anyone, if it's not oppressing, if it doesn't cause further suffering, then that's not to toxic masculinity. Exactly. That's you hanging yeah. with your boys. Yeah. You know, yeah. going yeah. to a rugby match, going mm. to a soccer match, mm. all of those things. If it does not cause any other suffering, if it doesn't um, hurt or mm. oppress, then I don't think it's toxic masculinity. Yeah. It can't be seen as that. Exactly. I fully, I fully agree with you. And yeah, we often sort of conflate and be like, now me being a man is toxic or me mm. being a man is mm. bad. And mm. that's mm. definitely not what no. we're saying. Like, I'm a man, I'm a cis man, yeah. you a cis yeah. man. And we identify that and we can be proud as, as being men. Yeah. But as you say, it's that how, how do we impact others? But yeah. also, more importantly, how does our expression of masculinity impact ourselves, mm. right? Mm. So when we're out with our boys watching rugby and that's great, like, does it stay there? Or do we have a different outlet where we are able to maybe share our feelings, sure. maybe a bit more vulnerable at sure. certain times? Because um, like it or not, we're all human beings and we're sensitive, we have emotions. Yeah. Um, and my question would then be, do we have that outlet? And if we don't, then I think it becomes to a point where it can be harmful, not yeah. to others necessarily, yeah. but to ourselves. ourselves. So, so I would also sort of add that extra layer to toxic masculinity is that it's those behaviors, those traits that harm others, but that could also sort of harm ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And again, with the idea of the man box that limit ourselves. Yeah. Because yeah. I think um, young people might have so much potential within them, yeah. but because of toxic masculinity mm. and the idea mm. of um, limiting self, prohibiting yeah. self, yes. um, they do not get to live out that mm. potential. Mm. Ah, that's so beautiful. Love that. Yeah, and I think, I think now that we're sort of talking about this, I'm thinking about how this man box get constructed in the first place, mm -hmm. right? What's the glue, the cello tape, the press stick mm -hmm. that is holding this, this man box together? And who is responsible for building this? And yeah, and sure. with, with the young boys that we work with, we see that it's, it's a wide array of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So it's from school to our friends, to our parents, to our mothers, our sisters, our cousins, what we're our watching. aunties, what we're watching, what the we're media, the, it's, it's all of these things that yeah. pump these messages of what a man ought to be and what a valued man ought to be and also yeah. what an undesirable man ought to be. Yeah. And I think as we have these sorts of conversations, it's really important to think about how do we start thinking about how we're raising our boys, right? Yeah. And how we, and this is not only for parents, but we all have young cousins and young, you know, people in our circles that we can mentor and help out. So how do we begin to sort of 
hit the refresh button on, on raising our boys, you know? Um, yeah, what are your, your thoughts on that? Yeah. Difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a difficult and an incredible mm. challenge. Mm. Um, mm. I don't think, um, and I do want to say as a, as a caveat or whatever, that we're not the experts in no, masculinity. Not at all. I think maybe no. you're closer than I am because you did a thesis <laughs> yeah. and a master's on, on the yeah. subject or close to the subject. But, yeah. um, but we're definitely not experts. Mm. And I mm. don't think... I don't think masculinity needs an expert. Yeah, I yeah. think it really is like a feel your way through it. Mm. It is a communal thing. Like, let's figure this thing out together. Like you said, like mm. it's so many stakeholders, so mm. many role players. Mm. And it does start there. Like, I think if you're asking me for thoughts or ideas on it, it mm. is, it starts at primary school yes. level. Like yes. what's happening at primary school level in terms of the curriculum? Like what are we saying yeah. in that curriculum in yeah. grade one, grade two, grade three? Mm. What's happening in the classroom? What's yeah. happening with our teachers? Yeah because they're big stakeholders, they're yes. big role players, right? And then, like you said, like we all have cousins mm. and like friends and whatever who have cousins. And, yes. and so it really is, I think that's where you start. That's mm. where you start hitting the refresh button is looking at these role players and these stakeholders mm. and going, how can we change the conversation? Yeah. Or like, yeah. how can we how can we look at a healthy masculinity? Yeah. What does that look like mm. for you? And like, are you exploring it? Like yeah. you as a teacher, are you exploring, are you exploring healthy, that? Yeah. you know, masculinity, not just being taught it through a curriculum, like exactly. not being brought mm. to it by a nonprofit organization yeah. coming yeah. to a school saying, hey, we need to talk about mm. healthy masculinity, but what are you doing at home mm. exploring it for yourself, mm. you know? Mm. So I think that it, it's, a, it's a big task. It's yeah. a big ask as well. Yeah. Um, and we're no experts, but I think that would potentially, for me, would be a great starting point is looking at those role yeah, players and yeah. the stakeholders. Yeah. Definitely. And I think sort of uh, one last word on that is, I think a good first step mm. is to make sure we are not on autopilot, mm. right? Because often my parents and siblings, I was raised like this. I'm just doing what I was taught. And I get that, right? We all have our own, you know, histories and those complex histories. But can we make sure that we are not raising our children on yeah. autopilot or not, you know, helping people on autopilot? Let's yeah. try and be intentional about what we are trying to do, how we are speaking to our boys and girls and, and making sure that we're not going to ever be perfect, yeah. but we can at least guard against being on autopilot. Yeah. And I think that's something that hopefully listeners and, and watchers can take away from this sort of segment. So now that we have a bit of a better grasp on, on what masculinity is, this whole idea of the man box and some of the sort of toxic ways in which we can express our masculinity, I think I want to shift our conversation to a bit more action, right? So mm -hmm. now, how do we as men who have a good heart, we have good intentions, but we might want some advice, some practical ways in which we can start shedding those constraints mm. of the man box mm. and embodying a bit healthier versions of ourselves. One of the first steps for me, like practical steps, is just questioning. Mm. Like mm. you're sitting on the bus, you're listening to Drake in the, in the ears um, <laughs> yeah. on your way home from school. Um, do we still listen to Drake? I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, but love yeah. Drake. And, yeah. um, and so you're listening to Drake, you're watching outside, you're looking outside the windows and you see interactions yeah. play out yeah. around you every day, mm. all day long, and questioning, mm. questioning every interaction, going, what's happening there? What about that as a masculinity? Yes. What about that as a healthy masculinity? What about that as a toxic masculinity? Yeah. Questioning every little interaction you get to see around you play mm. out. Yeah. Mm. That's oh. quite safe and internal. That's, yeah. that's, I think, so, so beautiful. And yeah, that sort of critical questioning lens on life, I think, is really helpful. Yeah. And I think, to sum up, I think we have start small and yeah. simple and we have question, you mm. know. Don't be afraid to question yeah. actions, behaviors, situations, because growth often then comes from questioning. Yeah. Um, we've had such a fruitful conversation, such a, a wonderful textured conversation, and I really, really thank you mm. for your time, for your presence, and for your, for your intentionality in, in, you. in being here. Um, before we close, is there any last things you want to say you want to you know that we didn't cover last few words um, before we before we sign off thank you for doing the good work <laughs> thank you for prompting thank you for asking thank you for having the conversation mm. creating the safe space i'm incredibly grateful and thank you for having me um, i think transcend let's mm. transcend i think like i said it's been five um, i think my 
thumb is on my mic. Um, I think it's been five, like I said, it's been five, ten years of deconstructing masculinity and toxic masculinity. And I think we're now in this open space and this yeah. clearing to transcend, just to yeah. go, cool. Now that everything's out on the table, what can we do? Mm. Like, let's transcend. Let's be huge. Let's level up. Let's swell. Mm. Um, let's go beyond even just masculinity or whatever, let's just transcend as humans. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think that's a brilliant place to end the conversation. Thank you so much listeners for joining us. We hope that you learned something um, and I implore you to please check out some of our other episodes, Men in Conversation series, Khaleesi Foundation in partnership with Justice Desk Africa. We thank you, have a lovely day further. <laughs>